Greetings, everyone. As always, I hope you're doing well. A little over a year ago, I did a video and I titled it Unprovoked Aggression. There, in other words, there was no unprovoked aggression. Therefore, what I was trying to say was that every single dog attack was provoked. They're always provoked. But man, I must have really either did not explain that very well because whatever I did, I seem like I made a lot of people upset. So in today's video, let's call it No Unprovoked Attacks, Second Edition. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you nine reasons why a dog will attack you seemingly unprovoked. And the reason why you need to know this, because this can possibly save your life, save you from injury, or that of someone that you know, a friend, or someone that's a member of your family. So pay attention to this video. I'm Brian Bailey, and for 40 years, I've studied aggression all over this planet with a variety of different social predators to include lions, hyenas, East African hunting dogs, wolves, and of course, dogs. I'm an expert on dog aggression, and I'm also the author of the book, The Hammer, Why Dogs Attack Us and How to Prevent It. Okay, so let's just get right into it. Pay attention to this. I cannot tell you how many times people come up to me or they come to see me and they bring their dog with them and they bring their stories with them. And they say, Brian, my dog attacked my child for no reason whatsoever. Or you read about it, a jogger was running down the street, minding their own business, listening to their AirPods, and suddenly they're attacked. And it always does seem like there's no reason behind it. But if you harbor the belief that you literally have to poke the darn bear in order for a dog to be justified in attacking you, you are wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. So pay attention. Number one, why? Why will a dog seemingly attack you for no reason? Well, first of all, they don't have to really have a reason, especially from a moral standpoint. We seem to have a compass, at least most of us do, that guides us in what is right and what is wrong, what is justified and what is not justified. But animals are immoral, meaning that they really have an unawareness of morality. They, there's an indifference for a moral reason, right or wrong, why I should attack you. Number two, not tolerant. In, even in the human societies, tolerance is a behavioral expression that unfortunately is only exhibited by the individual or the group that it favors, that can achieve a benefit from being tolerant. Don't count on a dog to always be tolerant of you or that little baby that you just brought into your household. Just because you are and because you work towards that, you can handle the screaming all night long. Don't expect a dog to do so. Most, in most animal kingdoms, there's very little tolerance to anything that is not familiar to the animal. So keep that in mind. Also, in 40 years of practicing canine pharmacotherapy, I would say the vast majority of dogs that seemingly attacked for no understandable reason by the humans, they were suffering what's called a RADI disorder. And that's reactive, affective, defensive, impulsive disorder. So a lot of words there. Reactive, affective, defensive, impulsive disorder, which means that there's higher activity in the amygdala. And that's the portion of the brain that is responsible for processing a friend from foe, from dealing with threats. And then we notice that there's a real significant lowering of activity in the frontal lobe. And that's the area that kind of controls impulses. So humans who have this, typically male teenagers have this, uh, is, is most documented as far as the number or the individuals that have this the most. Male teenagers, ratty disorders. They act impulsively, they act violently, they act aggressively. And most of them, after the action is over and the, and the violence is been done, then when you talk to them, they almost don't seem, it's like an out-of-body experience. Was I there? 
Did I actually do that? I, I really did that. It's very strange. But a lot of dogs suffer from the same disorder. Then that, that leads to what's called unchecked aggression. Unchecked aggression. It has been proven that if aggression as a whole is left unchecked, meaning whether it's because of a ratty, maybe it's just poor obedience, maybe it's overzealous protection of a territory, but any time aggression is left unchecked, it can lead to changes in the brain that will lower the serotonin levels, in which will then increase the likelihood of that individual exhibiting severe violence and aggression. Lower that serotonin and you're going to have a bit of a problem. Hence why a lot of dogs that I treat that are aggressive, they're placed on an antidepressant of the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor class. So think about that if you have a dog who has unchecked aggression. You need to work with it chemically with most dogs, sometimes just through training. But you cannot allow a dog to continue to aggressively attack individuals because there's a common thread in nature. Winners win, losers lose. So much of your future behavior is, can be predicted by your past behavior, your previous winnings or losings. That will motivate you to take a certain course of action if you've had perceived success in the past. So watch out for unchecked aggression, but that is a reason. Behavioral variability. Wow. I mean, I really shouldn't even have to explain that. When it comes to understanding expressions, behavioral expressions of aggression in humans, it's incredibly difficult because you're dealing with behavioral, physiological, and anatomical variances that are so great that you just can't put a human or a dog in a one-size-fits-all category. You can't. Just because you've owned 10 dogs that never attempted to bite anyone doesn't mean that dog number 11 is going to be like them. We're all different. Anytime you try to understand aggression, it must be approached from a variety of different perspectives. And when you do so, you have to take into account the individual's genetics, their learning in their formative years, or for a dog, especially during that sensitive period of four weeks to about 14 weeks. And then you have to take in mind all the body systems, like again, that, that lowering of serotonin, that hyperactive amygdala, and that less than active frontal cortex. You know, what, what is going on there? You have to take that into account anytime you think of aggression. Territory defense. Okay, why, for example, I've worked a couple of cases recently in which infants were attacked inside the home by the family dog. That would be a case of, of many reasons, but also because of territory defense. Uh, when it comes to a territory, that is an area that is more vigorously defended than anywhere on the planet Earth. In fact, Edward O. Wilson described your home or a wolf pack's denning area as the invincible center, meaning the the place that typically the, the underdog, the less amount of troops can overcome or usurp uh, an enemy of much greater strength, numbers, and power. It's the invincible center. So you come into your house and you bring this little baby with you. Your dog could attack that baby just out of territorial defense. Don't think for a second that dogs automatically know what is a baby What's a baby? And not only that, but you, you think, what's family? Why would my dog attack family? First question you need to ask yourself, what constitutes a family? Really, what, what does? You know, quite understandably, a family can be described as a biological unit of people that are genetically related. So yes, we would call that a family. But from a human standpoint, what is a baseball team? What is a, what is a, city, a city or a nation? Are we all family in that perspective? You have to take it from the dog's view. I'm not family. I'm a dog. You're a human. 
I don't understand the concept of family. If there's something new arriving, it doesn't mean that it's family to me. It doesn't even mean it's a member of my pack. In fact, it may be a pint-sized intruder that kind of needs to just be taken out. Get out of the territory. Another reason, most animals and most humans, when performing territorial defense, in the act of defending the territory, they typically use what's called a toolless defense. Toolless, I mean, there's no automatic go-to tool. It means that the animal is going to use whatever comes to it naturally or what it can create using the capabilities of its own brain. So again, don't count on a dog to warn, to growl, to bark. And whatever comes natural to that dog may be just attack. Remember, it's a toolless defense, not something I reach in my bag and I yank out and under these situations, I'm going to use a Phillips head. Whereas before, I'd use a flathead screwdriver. So when it comes to animals, they really act more impulsively, more naturally, and again, taking out the child could be part of territory defense. Also, uh, I skipped over when I went from behavioral variability, uh, welcome to live videos, uh, I just caught myself offspring killing. Did you know that offspring killing, killing of the offspring is quite natural in the animal kingdom? In fact, it was very natural even in the human kingdom as recently as 400 years ago. Why would an animal kill its offspring or the offspring of a conspecific, meaning of my species? Well, in most cases, it's when it comes to offspring that doesn't belong to me, it's not my, my kiddos. It's me taking out the competition, improving my genetic fitness because I just exterminated the offspring of a competitor, which didn't allow my offspring to grow, fill the void, and they have better chance of passing on my genes to their offspring. But within family, within group, within pack, within pride, lion pride, you will find that any sort of infanticide that occurs in which children are killed, then it's usually culling of the weak. It's normally the runt or it's an animal that has anatomical disabilities. They're, 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 they're anomalies. They're, you're missing a limb. You're born kind of crooked. You just can't perform the duties very well. So for them, it makes sense to go ahead and get rid of that mouth to feed so that I can use all my energy and all the food that I have to feed the strong. Again, passing on it's all about my fitness, passing on my genes to them so they can pass on my genes and them onto their offspring, so on and so forth. So again, you bring home a baby into your household. So I'm going to kind of pick on the infants here because in most cases, that's, what, that's where all the heat comes from all those people who commented on my previous video. Well, it was just a child in a crib. It was in there asleep and the dog jumped in and grabbed and attacked it. The child was minding, was asleep. It's just innocent little baby. Well, again, not to the dog. If it thinks as part of the pack, if it even begins to think that, even begins to think it's a family unit, look at it. When it first comes home, it doesn't even have arms and legs. Most of these children are swallowed up in blankets or outfits that just don't even expose their limbs. They can't crawl. They, they smell funny. They, they make weird sounds at all hours of the day and night. And the owners, the, the things I rely upon, the, the very things I do know, seem to be incredibly stressed. So yes, if it happens to be offspring, maybe a concept of a pack, that thing is never going to grow to be a strong animal. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to take it out, and hence I attack. Finally, surplus killing. Animals will sometimes attack a human being just to attack a human being. Know this. This has been well documented. I doc, this was documented with my time in which I did work uh, and, and contributory work for Alaska Game and Fish and also during my own professional experiences studying other social predators around the planet. You will see predators sometimes attack an animal that's often prey and not eat it. 
I talk about that in my book, The Hammer, Why Dogs Attack Us and How to Prevent It, uh, is surplus killing. Just recently, a pack of wolves killed nine elk and never fed upon a single one. In all the cases that I researched in writing The Hammer, Why Dogs Attack Us and How to Prevent It, there were cases in which so many of these people were attacked, but they, no one fed on them. The dogs didn't. In a few cases, they do, but this typically makes up about 8% and less. Uh, so I rem the other 92%, they just leave them alone. They attack them. And was it territorial? No. It wasn't even on their territory. It just happened to be a stray pack of dogs, and here a runner runs by, and they attack that runner. For all the reasons I even state here. So again, if you can't see the bottom of the screen here, I'm not sure. Uh, with this new Facebook update, they changed the kind of what the screen looks like a little bit here, but it is surplus killing. Okay, so what do you do with all of this? Well, the first thing is, is you have to accept this. Uh, no matter what you think of your dog or, or dogs in period, I love dogs. No one out there loves dogs more than me. That's why I, I go through all of the effort to make these videos and I do them for free. Why? Because I care about the dog and I certainly care about the human being. That's why I write books. That's why I do these videos. You need to accept the fact that an attack can occur. If you, from your own dog, from anyone else's dog, even a completely strange dog to a stray dog to a feral dog, you must accept that an attack can occur for no reason that you can possibly think of. You need to have that in your head because that is the very first step that you can take in preventing the attack. Kind of like a trust but verify situation. If you walk around going, I love you, dog. I love you, too. You're a really cool dog, and that is an awesome dog over there. However, you know, they could bite me. And they certainly could bite my child. It's just, it's in the back of your head. So you just kind of don't do certain things. For example, dog standing stiff. Hey, don't pet him. Walk away. Just make sure that you just have that in your head. It can happen. Because when you sit there and believe that you, you don't think it can happen, that you have to provoke a dog into attacking by some action on your part? No. Keep this in mind. Sometimes, again, like I said before, all it takes is just you showing up. You just have to be present. The next thing that you need to do is have a plan. Okay, what if I am attacked? What do I do? Well, first of all, again, try to prevent. You won't see me hiking in an unfamiliar area anywhere which I think I may encounter dogs without having the means to protect myself. Oftentimes that is mace, bear mace. I also make sure I have a cell phone with me and I also make sure that whatever I'm using, whether it's a backpack strap or whatever I have on me, a belt, something that can apply a tourniquet. Uh, I got attacked in my own veterinary hospital uh, one time many years ago and I had to immediately put on a tourniquet. And if I had not put on a tourniquet, I never would have made it to the emergency room. I would have bled out. So make sure that you have a plan. Prevent, but if I do get attacked, what do I do? Make sure you have equipment that can help you. Make sure you also cover up and curl up. When it comes to a dog fight, if it's a single attack, as I write in my book, cover up and curl up. One dog attacks are typically intra-group, trying to control you trying to achieve something, something about you provoked the dog into attacking you. If it's a two dog attack, totally different story. Now you need to fight. Two dogs, or anytime it's two dogs are greater, in most of those instances, they're there to kill you. They're just not there to wound you. And then lastly, if attack does occur, if one of your children are, are attacked by a dog, a friend, loved one, yourself, if you survive that incident, you, you escape that, stand back. Calm down, get through whatever you need to do, put a little distance between you and that event for a while, and then approach it like a scientist. Like a scientist. The way I'm doing right here for you. Again, in the book Crucial Conversations in Chapter 6, the four quadrants of any sort of interaction. What did you see in here? Then what story did you tell yourself? How did it make you feel? And then what action did you take? Okay, what did I see in here? Dog grabbed my child while she was playing with her toys on her blanket. What story did you tell yourself? Did it unprovoked? 
It was completely and utterly unprovoked. No reason whatsoever. Number three, how'd that make you feel? Terrified. Frustrated. Number four, what did you do? I got rid of the dog. I put the dog down. So again, step back. They don't have all these reasons. Immoral, not tolerant, ratty, reactive, affective, defensive, impulsive disorder. Unchecked aggression. How many years, how many weeks, how many months have your, has your dog been able to perform unchecked aggression? Behavioral variability. Not a one size fits all. Offspring killing is natural. It's natural. In fact, it is written by Dr. Wagner that it is so natural, it's almost as natural as procreation for most social species and groups. Keep that in mind, still in your dogs. Territory defense, what is a family? Are you sure your dog thinks of you as a family? Toolless defense, impulsive. Don't plan it, just do it. And if I can't do it, then I'll create a way. And that, what does that create a way? Open the door handle to the bedroom and jump inside a crib. Meaning that creation is limited to the capabilities of my brain. And then lastly, surplus killing. These are predators. Love them? I do. But they have fang and claw. And they still have the instinct that comes from a predator. They're only 40,000 years removed. And in the hour, in, in evolution, that's one granule of sand in the hourglass. So keep that in your mind. All right, guys, so that's all for to today. Believe it, have a plan, and then be a scientist afterwards so you make the right decisions regarding your dog. Take care.